what is the role it's allowed? He graduated as a psychology major in 1999 and has been an unstoppable force since. Uh, a serial entrepreneur will start his journey soon after his graduation with Rollins Rentals with a focus on providing quality off-campus homes to Rollins students in the area. Well, I don't know if you know this, but you have some of your tenants here today too. No yep. pressure. Yep. Um, Raise your hand. <laughs> will was also involved in Florida Land Partners. Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. There we Sorry. go. <laughs> you may have won. I think you have more. Um, we were also involved in Florida Land Partners up until the financial crisis in 2008, where most of, it, most of us would praise and, and hope for the financial storm to go away. Uh, we'll actually start a new venture. In came doorstep delivery, compared to Do DoorDash, DropHub, or Uber Eats, if you may. Um, but this was half a decade earlier. Right? So the idea was simple. Um, a, a small fee for someone to go over to the restaurant, place the order for you, and deliver it right to your doorstep. Uh, with smart marketing and a lot of hard work, doorstep delivery soon became a household name in the, in the greater Orlando and Southeast as well. We'll obviously officially exited the arena after being acquired by Waiter Holdings in 2009, a combined nine-figure exit. Appreciate that, happy about that. But it's Will's newest venture that has my attention. Uh, he, would, he wouldn't like to call it a venture though. It's, it really is. Uh, a movement. Having learned from the good and the bad times in several industries, Will's purpose with more uh, movement, uh, more momentum is to help others become the best version of themselves. I am so excited to hear from you, Will, today. Uh, not only about your entrepreneurial journey, but also about your values and ideals that have shaped who you are today. Um, we professors, we can teach you finance, we can teach you marketing, Accounting and whatnot, but this, the entrepreneurial spirit, is something we just can't teach. So, what I would love for you to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy. Uh, and we'll, uh, I would love to welcome you on the stage now. Thank you. Wow, that was an awesome intro. Thank you. Did not deserve all that. that You're coming nice. uh, Oh, yeah. Um, so, this is going to be a pretty interactive presentation. Um, I've seen a lot of presentations in my day. And I don't like to get bored, so hopefully I will not bore you. It's only going to be about 10 to 15 minutes. It's not going to be too long. It's going to be a panel. Uh, a lot of the things I'm doing are going to be up on screen, so you're welcome to, to stare at me. But I think you'll get more if you're, if you're paying attention up here as well. So like you hear, hear you know. Uh, in 2019, this past year, the World Happiness Report came out. And it would confirm the recent trend that Americans are becoming less and less happy. Now, in fact, 50% of people reported being less happy than in the 90s. And this is actually, in spite of this huge financial boom, one of the longest and biggest that we've ever had in history. Uh, although, let's not count these last three days. I don't know if anybody's been following the market, the coronavirus, crazy stuff, right? Uh, but in general, it's been pretty great. So with all this financial success and all this great stuff that's happening in the country, why are people less happy? Well, I want to show you a quick short video here of people who I think have really just nailed the whole happiness at one point in their lives, expressing their human spirit. So let's take a quick look here. <clears throat> So, you know, what happens to us? You know, we go from kids when it's all about just this unbelievable passion and excitement and exploring the world. Uh, our primary goal is squeezing every drop of awesomeness out of every single day. Um, and then things start to change. You know, you get to college, you become young adults. I'm sure you still have some of that. Perhaps alcohol is playing a part in some of that. Yes, I too went to Rollins College, so I know how that goes. Um, but in general, there's this difference between that kind of unbridled, I can do anything and conquer the world, and you 
you guys are kind of right on the precipice. So this is a super important time for you. And I hope you pay attention to every word I say, because if I could have gone back in time uh, right now and talked to myself 20 years ago when I graduated, I'd tell you everything that I'm telling you today. Here's an excerpt from one of my favorite poems that really nails the difference between being a kid and being an adult. It's called Mud Pellows and Dandelions. When I look at a patch of dandelions, I see a bunch of weeds that are gonna take over my yard. My kids see flowers for mom and blowing white fluff that they can wish on. I know when I hear music I love, I know I can't carry a tune and I don't have much rhythm. I sit self-consciously and I listen. My kids feel the beat and they move to it. They sing out the words and if they don't know them, they make up their own. And when I see a mud puddle, I step around it. I see muddy shoes and dirty carpets. My kids sit in it. They see dams to build, rivers to cross, and worms to play with. So let me ask you all, at what point did you stop splashing in mud puddles and picking dandelions? Don't worry, you're not alone. This is Emmett. He's the majority. That's a bad thing. He's your typical victim who's letting outside forces determine his happiness and feels that there's nothing that he can do about it. But it wasn't always like this. He was born bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to take on the world, conquer, and explore. That was full of bright, bold, beautiful colors. But then all of a sudden, there was these influencers that came into his life. First came his parents. They meant well, but at the end of the day, they're just byproducts themselves of the same vicious cycle that Emmett's now trapped in. Passing down whatever belief system they adapted, no matter how distorted. And at the end of the day, it's not what they say, but what they do that we end up copying, right? Then came his peers. Similarly, they were passing on whatever belief systems they were hearing. Uh, Emmett was mimicking them, especially those cool kids who made a, a career out of doing the exact opposite of what they should be doing and what's good for them. Next came school. From preschool to high school, he was taught essentially the same things that his parents were taught and his parents' parents, because as much as we've evolved in the last 200 years or so, the curriculum, unfortunately, has not. Yes, it's important to learn the basics such as math, science, history, but when you start getting into things like advanced, trig, bio, AP2, instead of the basics of what has proven to lead to a happy, healthy, successful life, such as developing discipline, emotional intelligence, and stress management, something's wrong. Finally, came tech and media. And it was unaware that the primary goal that their primary goal wasn't to make him better, but to have him buy into whatever it was that they were selling. He found himself constantly bombarded with unhealthy stereotypes and images, solidifying whatever box he'd begun to put himself into. His phone and other devices were paying attention to every moment, every move he was making, only showing him more of whatever belief system he'd begun to adapt, further polarizing him from those that didn't share the exact same view. All this added up, and basically by the time Emmett got to college, he was your typical victim. He lost a lot of that mojo he had once, he once had as a kid. The system had failed him, and that bright, bold, beautiful sky had begun to gray. I was right there with Emmett. This is my real name. Born Rocky Clay Thomas Luton Moore to two hippie parents. I indeed had a rocky adolescence. But it wasn't always this way. I too was born bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, Playing at the beaches, I vividly remember playing at the beaches in Honolulu, Hawaii with my sister. Wild, naked, and free. But I was ill equipped to deal with an alcoholic mother with a raging temper and a dad who took a trip around the world during my most formative years. I vividly remember sneaking to the back of the school to eat my lunch alone because I was so embarrassed that other people were going to be seeing me eating by myself. By the time I got to college, I too was your typical victim, sure that life was out to get me and there was nothing that I could do about it. Don't believe me? Here's my class photo senior year. I'm sorry. Uh, I was hovering at that time just above rock bottom, uh, high enough not to completely crash, but low enough where my life was void of any real, true happiness. But then, serendipitously, the universe, she done throw me a bone. I discovered a book that would forever alter my trajectory. It taught me that for the first time, I wasn't alone in the thoughts and feelings that I was having and the struggles and that there was hope. 
I became an insatiable self-help beast, devouring every book that I could get my hands on, essentially becoming my own human science experiment, testing what I was learning in the world, real world, noting what worked, what didn't, forming a hypothesis, and then starting all over again. Essentially, what I was learning was to become aware of the most important aspects of my life, the actions that I was taking in each of them, and the habits that I was developing. Years later, I've never stopped using myself as a human science experiment. I've had formed deep and lasting relationships. I've started to grow many, several successful businesses, and I've unlocked many of life's mysteries that have kept me in the dark for so very long. My greatest achievement though, becoming a father to two amazing sons who truly are the gifts that keep on giving. Even better than Jelly and Mark Twain. <laughs> My two muses remind me every single day why it's so important to never stop playing. But it hasn't all been puppy dogs and ice cream. Yes, there's been some wins, but there have been far more failures. But the main difference between old will and new will is how I view those failures. I now see them as opportunities to improve and pivot, to become bigger, better, faster, stronger, versus excuses to be miserable. At the end of the day, what I've learned is that while life is complex, principles, they're not. There's timeless laws that have proven themselves over and over again throughout history, and as well as in my own life. I've come to call these total truths, and I've made it my mission in life to share these with as many people as possible, including yourselves. It turns out, Everyone has the exact same five main areas, or cores, as I call them, that you need to continually take action on, find balance in, to become the happiest and best version of yourself. These are your mindset, getting your mind working for instead of against you by adjusting your attitude, your perception, and your confidence level, becoming what I call a growth owner versus a fixed victim, which says that you know you have everything within you to accomplish what you want to succeed, and that obstacles are only temporary roadblocks waiting for solutions. Your next core is your career and your finances. Doing what you love and are great at, executing your purpose, and exponentially growing your wealth along the way. Your third core is your relationships. Creating and maintaining deep, fulfilled, lasting relationships. Oops, excuse me. And gaining allies to help you achieve your goals along the way. Next up is your physical health. Taking care of your physical body to ensure looking good, feeling good, and gaining the energy and stamina to propel you through life. And finally, your emotional, intelligence, your emotional health and your giving back. Managing stress, expressing your passions regularly, and making sure that the world is better, not worse, for having you in. Now all of these add up together to form what I call your happiness meter. The more the right actions that you're taking, and the more balance you're able to find in each of your cores, the more positive momentum you're gonna build, and the happier you're gonna be. Similarly, the more wrong actions that you take, and we'll talk about those in a second what they are, and the more unbalanced you are in your five cores, the more negative momentum, and the more miserable you're gonna be. At the end of our day, our lives all come down to habits. Habits don't care if they're good or bad, help or hurt us. Either way, they're gonna compound step by step, day by day, to form who we are. And within each of our cores, we've all developed habits. On a daily basis, in fact, 97% of our actions stem from those habits. Think of each of your cores as thrusters of your life's engine, where you're gonna build either positive or negative momentum, depending on the habits that you developed in each. Those influencers we mentioned earlier, well, they've caused mostly failure habits for the majority of us. And like a curmudgeonly old grandpa, they're refusing to budge. But if you're able to stop those failure habits and replace them with success habits, you'll be on your way to what I call firing on all cylinders. What type of habits have you developed? Are they taking you up, up, and away into that bright, bold, beautiful sky, or are they crashing you straight down towards your own personal rock bottom? With your mindset, 
Do you let fear, fear paralyze you, or do you give it the finger, taking it head on so that you can spur your growth? With your career in finance, are you running around like a cracked out chicken, or do you have goals that you're working towards every single day and proactively kicking ass and making things? With your relationships, are you liking your friend's photo on Facebook? Or are you spending real human time with them? With your physical health, are you prioritizing instant gratification? Or have you developed an exercise regimen that you can stick to and are proud of? And finally, in your emotional health and giving back, is your head stuck in the sand and you're simply crossing off to-dos not looking at the big picture? Or are you stopping to smell the roses and regularly incorporating your passions every single day? Remember Emmett? He's actually my newly born son. Same name. Those influencers we discussed earlier have not had a chance yet to do their thing. And what I want for him more than anything in the world is the exact same thing that I want for you all. To become the best version of yourselves so that you can fire on all cylinders on your way up to that bright, bold, beautiful sky. How are you going to do this? Well, first you got to take complete ownership and you got to develop discipline and balance in each of your five fours. I essentially call this becoming an entrepreneur of your life. Now most of us associate being an entrepreneur with this, the career and the finance core. But as you've now seen, that's just one out of five areas of your life. And indeed, at one point, when I was your age, I thought that the secret of happiness was becoming filthy, stinking rich, and making everybody pay that was mean to me in the past. But at some point in my journey, I realized that finances, the finances is just one half of one fifth of the big picture. And not only does money not solve all your problems, it's gonna cause way more of them if you don't have your other cores going. I realized I must nurture all of my cores. And like I would major components of my business if I expected to crush it in the most important business that I knew that I would ever run my life. But instead of money, happiness is the currency. And to become filthy, stinking rich is to be firing on all cylinders. And the cool thing is there's a ripple effect. So the more you kick ass and take names in your, each of your cores and you start building momentum in this, the more it'll spread to the others and vice versa. And it trickles down and they all start to gain additional momentum with one another. Ultimately, my goal is to help you become the best version of yourself so that you can in turn help others become the best version of themselves so that that will inspire them to in turn pay it forward to help the world become the best version of itself. I've developed a system that'll help you shine a spotlight on whatever failure habits you developed in each of these cores we discussed and replace them with what I call success habits. I've got a book and an app that I'm super, super psyched to be rolling out later on this year that takes advantage of the latest in science and technology to use those failure devices we're all addicted to, that would be your cell phones, and actually use them to help you level up it's gonna be gamified so that when you level up on screen, you're actually not just getting a hollow victory where you're getting a few gems, you're actually gonna be leveling up in real life as well. So stay tuned for that. No matter what side of the fence you stand on politically, whether you believe in climate change or not, or whether it's Instagram or TikTok, I think we can all agree the world's gotten a little bit crazy and some changes need to be made. Now is the time for you guys. You guys are so lucky to be hearing this type of stuff now. Again, if I could go back in time, I definitely would because I thought I had it all figured out back then, but really it is about these five fours. And changing your habits as you get older only gets way harder. Trust me on that one. You can either use the law of compounding for or against you. The late Stan Lee, the OG, the original gangster of superheroes, once said, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. We all have great power within us. 
What are you going to do with yours? I truly hope that you'll join me in this movement of change that I call the Momentum Movement. So that you, Emmett, and your future kids can live your best possible lives and help the rest of the world do the same. Get moving, gain momentum, join the movement on your way to becoming an unstoppable force. Thank you. I'd actually, speaking of tenants, I'd like to dedicate this, this speech to Joey Sink, who was actually, I'm sure you guys know, passed away recently and was one of my tenants. So this is for him. <laughs>